Let me ask you a question. Should magic be fooling? It sounds like a contradiction, right? Because magic is impossible things happening and impossible things should fool their audience. Or should they? In this video, I wanted to sit in front of the camera or stand in front of the camera and talk about this topic, dive deep into it and see if we can answer the question, should magic be fooling? And is Penn and Teller Foolers bad for magic? Now, yes, I know what some of you are thinking. Cavan, this is a stupid question. Obviously, magic should fool audiences. What drugs have you been taking? And I would say to that that the question isn't as simple as it first appears, and all of them. If you perform a magic trick to an audience, and the audience know how it's done immediately, a lot of people would call that a bad magic trick, right? Because the magic trick hasn't lived up to the minimal expectation of being impossible, it hasn't ticked that box, and so therefore, it's a bad magic trick. But let me ask you a counter question. You are probably a magician. Watching this video, if you watch this channel, the vast majority of my audience are magicians. So I'm gonna take a punt and say you're probably a magician. So I'll ask you this question. Do you enjoy watching magic? And the answer is obvious. Of course you do. Of course you enjoy watching magic. Musicians still go to concerts, comedians still go to stand-up comedy shows, and actors still watch stage and TV and film. So obviously magicians watch and enjoy magic. But the enjoyment is slightly different. When we watch a magic trick, certainly when I watch a magic trick, and this isn't me being big-headed at all because there's a hell of a lot of magic that I don't know and I'm still fooled by, but I'd say 90 or 80% of the time I watch a magic trick, I know how it's done. I can see straight through it, I can appreciate the mechanics and the sleight of hand or the gimmicks. Does that mean I don't enjoy those sort of magic tricks? Absolutely not! As magicians, when you watch magic and you know how it's done, the enjoyment comes from something else. Obviously the enjoyment comes from the performance aspect, and that is a massive part of it, but also you can appreciate the skill of the performer, you can appreciate the craftsmanship of the gimmick, or the psychology of the misdirection, you're appreciating it from a whole new angle. A nice little phrase that I like to think of is, behind the scenes documentaries don't ruin movies. An example that springs to mind is from one of my favourite films, Inception, the famous corridor scene where the guy is running on the ceiling and the walls. I was blown away by that scene. And then I saw how it was done and it didn't ruin it. In, if anything, it made it more impressive because they actually built a huge corridor and they rotated it and had the actor running around inside it. I think that is beautiful. And I appreciate that in the same way I appreciate a magical method. I know how it works, but now I'm seeing a new angle of it, and I still love the original thing just as much. So here's an interesting thing, why does magic not get the same treatment? Why, when an audience sees a magic trick and they know how it's done, do they think that that's a bad magic trick? I don't necessarily think there's an answer to that question, I just think it's an interesting springboard for discussion. Here's another way of thinking about it. What if we lived in a world, completely hypothetical, we lived in a world where everyone knew a little bit of magic? Let's say everyone has the knowledge of a magician who's been doing it for one year. Just everyone. How would that change magic? Obviously there would still be magicians who knew a lot more magic, but how would that change the art form? Well, personally, I think it would raise the bar a lot higher because audiences are more knowledgeable and therefore the magicians who are doing it as their job have to come up with new methods and they have to come up with things that audience members wouldn't know. But it would also mean that audience members had an appreciation for those basic methods and could tell a more fooling trick from a trick that just uses the double lift, right? And I'm not having to go at the double lift, it's just obviously a basic method. Like I was saying, most magic tricks that I see don't fool me because I know how they're done. But then every so often, something comes along that blows my mind, that would blow any magician's mind because there are some creators that come up with things that are just ridiculously fooling. And I love that. It happens probably once a week where I just get completely fooled. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know all the magic. No one knows all the magic. And that is a beautiful thing. But in a way, I'm appreciating that method more than a layperson. Magicians are able to appreciate the distinction between incredibly fooling tricks and tricks that would fool anyone. Again, I'm not saying that this is necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, and I'm not saying I would want to live in a world where everyone had a basic knowledge of magic. I enjoy being able to fool people with simple methods, because at the end of the day, ultimately, I'm a believer that method doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what method we use, we can use any method. 
to fool our audience, so long as it is giving our audience that memory, that incredible, impossible memory where they're returned to a childhood sense of wonder, where anything seems possible. That, to me, is what magic is. It doesn't matter about the method, it doesn't matter about your double lifts and strings and magnets and the Extreme Control 2.0 or the latest product from Murphy's Magic. None of that matters. That is just a pathway towards what magic really is. That is not magic. And so, Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter that, you know, audiences can't appreciate different methods from each other, because that ultimately isn't what's interesting. Another thing I wanted to briefly touch on is Penn and Teller Foolers, right? It's one of the most popular magic shows out there. It has really pushed magic into the mainstream, and I think it's brilliant for that. I'm a huge admirer of Penn and Teller, and I love the show Penn and Teller Foolers. As a magician, it kind of feels like one of the only TV shows that's really sort of aimed at me, aimed at the magician demographic, which is quite a niche. So for that, I love it. And I think that it's great for, you know, lay people as well to watch magic and sort of have a little insight into the world of magic, that there are tricks that fool other magicians, including incredibly knowledgeable ones like Penn and Teller. A lot of audiences kind of assume that there are just a set number of methods. You know, they might not even know that we use the word methods, but there's a set number of tricks. And once you know all of those, it's just about picking and choosing which ones you perform. But I think Penn and Teller has opened up the fact to audiences that there aren't a set number of methods. There's an infinite number of methods, and there are magicians coming up with things that no other magician has thought of. That, to me, I think is really, really important. And yeah, driving that forwards into the public knowledge is a great thing. I think in that respect, Penn and Teller Foolers is allowing audiences to have more of an appreciation of methods, and of the fact that these different methods and different creators in magic exist. So, big thumbs up from me. But there's an issue with it. <laughs> there's an issue that I have with Penn and Teller Foolers, and it's kind of something I've spoken about before, where I used to do a series on this YouTube channel called Fool Me. This is Cavern Booth Fool Me, episode one. But I stopped doing it, and I changed the series into just reacting to magic, where I just react to magic and I take in all the elements of it. Not just whether it fools me or not, yes or no, but the performance. You know, everything about the magic video. But the reason I stopped doing Fool Me was because of that very reason. I didn't want it to be about fooling. That's not the point of magic. Magic shouldn't be a puzzle. Do you know how it's done? No, you don't. You're an idiot. <laughs> and I don't think that's what Penn and Teller Foolers is doing, but I think there's a risk that it can be seen as that. That I don't like. I don't like the fact that, and I think it's, you know, very much an issue in the magic community of knowing methods and boasting about your magical knowledge, which is not the point of magic at all. But ultimately, do I think that Penn and Teller Foolers is bad for magic? Absolutely not. I, I would not say that for one second. I think Penn and Teller Foolers has done far more good for the magic community. I just wanted to touch on it in this video, because I think it's an interesting idea. It focuses more on the methods than any other magic show, and considering this video is about methods and appreciating methods, I felt it only right to talk about this. So. There we go. That is this video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit of a different one. Once again, leave your thoughts down in the comments and make sure to drop a like on this video if you haven't already. And if you're new to the channel and you've never seen a video from me before, or if you have, apparently a large percentage of my viewers come back and continue to watch videos, but don't subscribe. So if you find yourself watching my videos on the regs, on the regulars, I will never say on the regs again, I'm sorry, but make sure to subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Okay.